This portion of For the People, presented by Marlboro Filter Cigarettes. You're where the flavor is when you're in Marlboro country. The simple things mean a lot out here. A dry blanket, hot cup of coffee, a good smoke, Marlboro filter cigarette with flavor, a world of flavor, from Marlboro's Richmond recipe of aged prime tobaccos. Come to where the flavor is. Come to Marlboro country. Man, you have tough, scratchy beard? Problem. Poof! With new verma shape. Put other ladders on a the bladder. Then Burma Shave. See? Burma Shave soaks rings around them all. Makes smooth, clean shave. Makes smooth, clean man. Burma Shave. <laughs> I'm very happy you took this case. I know how busy you are. Well, you know how I feel about upholding our values and freedom of the press. Oh, uh, Mr. Salisi. Uh, you know and I know that the illegal actions of your office could be ascribed to overzealousness on the part of the arresting officer. However, my client and certain other interested parties feel that they're entitled to redress. I don't understand your attitude. We're going to return the books. The judge freed your client. What more do you want? These other interested parties, who are they? Why, the uh, publisher of the illegally confiscated book. There is a threat to the people of this community, Mr. Coster, when police state methods are employed to suppress a publication which offends the morals of one man or a group of men. I resent your exaggeration. And I've instituted suit against the city for false arrest and defamation of this man. Oh, no. A legitimate businessman whose business will suffer because of your actions. The suit will alter charge trespass. You're going to a lot of trouble to get a couple of bucks out of the city for your client. What's the real reason behind this? The fact that you don't know is frightening. My client has no guarantee that his rights will be respected in the future, nor do any other members of this community. Their only safeguard lies in knowing what you and your office have done. An informed and aroused public must be respected. Mm, Masonly put, Counselor, and of course I agree. I've already apologized to your client. Is I advised him to reserve any further statements until the trial. Good morning. Where'd he come from? My client couldn't afford to keep him in cufflinks. How smooth. Yeah, you better get the polish out yourself. You have to face them in court. Me? What about corporation counsel? Nice going. What can I say? I should have made you sit in that court. You missed a trumpet solo on civil liberties. And the rest of the orchestra will be heard from, too. I don't think it won't. Look, I made a mistake. I explained how it was. I oh, don't apologize. Please. Don't try to defend what you did, huh? I couldn't. I still can't. Look, he pushed me into it. 
He was playing to the grandstand. Yeah, well, your ego problem is going to be costly, and not only to this office. If they make any more noise, if they bring any more pressure to bear... Look, you mean I'm it. Malloy is the goat. Excuse me, Mr. Solis. But I'm as politically hip as the next guy. Going to the bookstores was not my idea. If you remember, I asked you about a warrant, and you said it was unofficial. You made it official by pinching him. I thought the idea came from upstairs. You know how the mayor feels about the smut that's going around the newsstands and bookstores. Yeah, but what about this book? This Memoirs of Adolescence. Huh? Well, read it. Read it and you'll find out. But didn't the idea originate from his office? The idea to pressure the bookstores? Never mind whose idea it was. I'll stop oh. using the word pressure. <laughs> What's so funny? I didn't know it was your idea. Trying to ace in with the mayor? Oh, never mind. All right, so it was my idea. All I asked for was a little cooperation. I didn't settle for a civil suit and a the march of the Great Brotherhood of Liberals in City Hall. Too bad I'm not a deputy commissioner. And getting me busted would really look like something. All right, take it easy. Maybe it won't be as bad as you think. It'll be your job to make sure it isn't. You need our zealous friend here for anything more? No, he's done his bit for the year. You want, Come on. Look, you want me transferred? Come okay. On. But if it's my badge, you've got to fight. Yeah, get out of here before he really gets mad. Just getting warmed up. What do you want to chase him for? Tony, I don't think we should go to court. This case. They won't settle. Then we should contest the damages. <sighs> they won't go for it upstairs. You know how things like this get resurrected and blown up every time election comes around. No, nope. we're just going to have to try and erase it. How, Tony? How are we going to justify our actions? How are we going to handle the defense? I didn't say it would be easy. I don't care how innocent Frank's arrest seems to us. It was wrong, and so was your idea to pressure, excuse me, to request that the bookstores cooperate. One day, David, you come to terms with the world the way it is and not the way you wish it was. I'm no crusader, but I'm no sub-deb either, not on this job. But, oh, Lord, how stuffy you can be. Well, tell me I was wrong. Tell me that it isn't attempted censorship of a book no court has called obscene. Read the book. Read it, and then we'll talk. Are you insisting that I handle this case? Read the book. Dave, please. <laughs> I'm all ready. Well, you're not all ready, and it's after seven. Please don't make us late. Okay. Okay. You picked the nuttiest time to start a book. I'm so nervous anyway. I know I didn't practice enough. We should have stayed with Mozart, the, the familiar classics. But you know Ben. Everything's telling on with him lately. <laughs> He's beginning to look baroque. Oh, tonight of all nights. You do fine, honey. Well, heaven knows who else will be there. Probably the whole Lincoln Center Board of Directors. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Jesse Harrell can call it a party if they want. Feels more like an audition to me. Okay, what do you think? You do fine. Well, I, mean, I mean, is it all right? Well, the, the dress. Hmm, fine, fine. <gasps> Thanks. Nice to know I can still underwhelm you. Phyllis, how would it be if I uh, took you to the party and then left? Would you mind? How would you like a belt and the chops? <laughs> All right. I just don't feel like partying. I'd love things up for you. Oh, that'll be the day. Or night. What's the matter? Nothing important. Uh, well, it must be important. Problem it's affecting downtown, you. that's all. You concentrate on your playing. I don't want to clutter you up with unessentials. But, Dave, I, wa I want to know. No. Oh, I'll work it out. How about you and I? Be selfish about it. Concentrate on uh, Mozart. Tell him Him too. I'm sorry to drag you to these things. Oh, it's my own fault for marrying a, a beautiful musician. It'd be so easy just to pick up the phone and tell him you can't make it because the kids are sick. And everybody always understands about parents and sick children. Cut it out. I wish I could give you that excuse, Dave. I said cut it out. Said we weren't going to talk that way. Well, I forgot. Phil, why don't you call the agency tomorrow? Yeah, okay. Maybe they have some news for us. Could be. Remind them that we uh, haven't had that final interview yet. Interrogation. And also remind them that they have an age limit for adopting infants, and we're aging fast. It ain't easy, is it? Oh, it's easy. You don't care.
be very proud of your wife, Mr. Costa. I am very proud. I'm very sleepy. Oh, I was joking, Mrs. Orell. I was being facetious. I thought you were, but it's so difficult to tell with a lawyer. One always assumes their humor is, uh, well, proper story. Delicately put. Your husband's a lawyer, isn't he? Well, if there's no statute of limitations. He hasn't practiced in 15 years. Well, how do you find the time with all his other activities? You did it. Oh, I tried hard enough. Oh, you were superb. You all were. We were just talking about you, darling. Mm -hmm. I wish I had the energy to do half the things you do. <laughs> he doesn't believe in idle hands. Oh, careful, Alice. I don't want to be accused of lechery. I came over to find out what you like, young lady. You're the only one here who deserves a drink. Uh, well, I'm the only one without one. Say goodbye to your husband. Uh, goodbye, husband. Goodbye, wife. I knew I shouldn't have come. Don't worry about Jesse. He's unassailable. <clears throat> you are terrible. Audrey, he's dangerous. I believe it. Have you read it? Men yes. of about it. Is. It is of a fire. You have yes. read it. It's oh, the most see. important wait, wait, wait. book written in the last five minutes. You ready to cut? Don't be silly. Stick around and enjoy yourself. Classy party. Davy's fabulous, isn't he? What a man. He moves with equal ease in so many worlds. Business, government, and of course the arts. Hey, I didn't mean to wake you. <sighs> Sorry, I was just eavesdropping. But I have Oh, wait, excuse me, a young man. You look like a normal, healthy American boy. Oh, well, thank you, I think. <laughs> Read that. And tell me if you think it's art. That is silly. Anything taken out of context will sound distorted. I've read it. Here's a man who's read the book. Well, most of it. Enough to form an opinion. Now, you tell these Philistines that it's their own minds that are sick, not the author. Of course, I haven't read all of it. Well, what's the matter, Dave? Well, I'm afraid I wouldn't be much use to you. From what I've read, it's the most disgusting I've seen treatment of sex I've ever come to come. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really? This uh, prurient piece of junk should be treated seriously by the critics and the law, and well, that's more than I can imagine. Well, I it thought. begins with a cheap leer and ends, I assume, with a grunt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, did you like it? <laughs> oh, Jazz, come on, here. Defend this, let's hear it. Don't tell me you wrote it. Oh, good heavens, no. And the book should never have been written. Don't blame the poor author. It's his view of life. Yes, Absolutely. but why can't he work it out with his analyst instead of letting us in on it? Because it's an important new voice that deserves to be heard. Besides, it's a brilliant satirical tour de force. That it says right cool. here, brilliant well, satirical... Well, surely you wouldn't deny the man his right to be heard. Somebody bring this child a copy of the First Amendment to the Constitution. Well, there's nothing in the First Amendment that licenses pornography. But you're right, Mr. Farrell. It's not the author that, uh, whose fault it is. It's the publisher I blame. A uh, fast buck boy in the hell with decency. It's not hard to imagine the kind of person that publishes this filth. Anyone for ping pong? What she means is you're talking about me. I'm the publisher. But fortunately, not everyone agrees with Mr. Costa. I may as well tell you, it's an open secret. But you're holding there the winner of the North American Book Award and the Prix de Garonnet. How marvelous. He'll announce it tomorrow. Well, congratulations. At a time like this, you'd give a million for a real medication to relieve your upset stomach. A real medication like Pepto-Bismol. You can have it now. New Pepto-Bismol tablets are here. Pepto-Bismol tablets give you the same protective coating action as Pepto-Bismol liquid to stop stomach irritation. Look, here's a leading alkalizer dissolved in water as directed. An antacid tablet dissolved in water. And here's Pepto-Bismol liquid. Watch. No coating action here. None here, but look at Pepto-Bismol Liquid's protective coating action. And new, chewable Pepto-Bismol tablets give you the same coating action that works in your stomach to soothe away distress of indigestion, nausea, and restore control to lower tract. 
quick as a wink, you're in the pink with new good-tasting Pepto-Bismol tablets and soothing pink Pepto-Bismol liquid. Ugh, gotta change our brand of toothpaste. Just doesn't go with curry and scotch. No, I can't believe it. What's happened to us, to our standards? I'm not talking about morality, I mean literature. This is terrible. Uh, well, I suppose there's three or four different levels of meaning and you have to dig for it. Well, I don't have to dig for it. I can recognize a sewer by its smell. Well, you're not exactly qualified to judge, are you? Huh? I mean, impartially, with all the mess downtown. I don't know what you mean is I'm not qualified to judge it as literature. I didn't say that. Me. No, not this time, but the tone is there, the funny quality to your voice, the patronizing smile I hear, the cool smile. Oh, Dave, let's not start that. Not well, now. it's true, isn't it? Well, am I wrong? That's the first book you've read that I can remember that is no law book. And even it has to do with some case you're involved well, with. Well, maybe I just don't have the time. Well, I'm not your talking about time. Are. It's an attitude you have, Dave. Your world gets narrower every year, and it doesn't have to. You're always so quick to put me in the camp of the Philistines. What is it, Dave? What do you want from me? I'm, I'm not, I've never pretended to be a giant intellect, but I'm no George Babbitt, either. Well, nobody's saying you are. Then what? What are you, what are you, what's eating you? Well, if you really want to know, I think you acted like a prize bull tonight. Oh, yeah. oh. You knew how important Jesse Harrell can be to my work. You were very impressed with him in the beginning. Admit it. Then suddenly you learn he publishes a book and it's it all... It's not just a book, this thing. Dave, really, I really don't want to bicker about it tonight, Well, please. you brought it up. Well, I didn't mean to set up a debate. I, I just can't believe that you're narrow-minded enough to let a book affect you like It's this. not the book, they'll not hold. I know standards can change in a, in a decade. I mean, look at us. Don't you think my mother sounded off when she heard about your divorce? And when she heard that he divorced you and the rest of it? Oh, she managed to survive the horror of it all. Oh, honey, I, all, all I meant was that the rules change over the years about everything, even pornography. But one thing remains constant, and that's intent. And I just don't believe that Jesse Harrell published this Textbook of perversion for the idealistic reasons he gave tonight. No matter how many prizes they trot out, I find it hideously immoral. Not because it's frank about sex, but because the frankness, the, the reality it presents as, as truth, is the truth on a wall on a subway toilet. The prosecution rests. Oh. Honey, it's only a book. It's only a, You know, I wonder if we had children. Well, we don't. We don't. So whatever it is, forget it. I just wonder if you'd still feel the same. In Roth versus the United States, the majority opinion of the court held that the fundamental freedom of speech and press have contributed greatly to the development and well-being of our free society and uh, are indispensable to its continued growth. An excellent Fourth of July speech. Where's Dave? On his way. They've not used that in their brief, of course. What have we got for our side? Well, there's that opinion on pressure from police and community. You know, Grove Press versus the superintendent of the Chicago Police Taste Department. Taste in literature is a matter of education, yeah. It'll be of help, but we need... Oh, I'm sorry. Good afternoon, Dave. I'm sorry I'm late. I was trying something. How do you do? Uh, trying what? Well, I was uh, concentrating, you might say, on the book itself. I must have talked to every major critic from Boston to Washington. What do you got? Oh. Even those that hated the book wanted nothing to do with, uh, they kept calling it censorship. Did Marion tell you that the Civil Liberties Union has filed a complaint? Yeah. We've gotten all sorts of fun things in the mail and on the horn. We're very popular with the book burners. Well, maybe they're the ones that make the noise. There are others in this city. What about all those letters we get from the clergy, parents, teachers, decent people who want their kids growing up in a decent city? Well, we've got a lot of work to do, huh? Let's save the speeches for the court. We go to trial on the 18th. Cases pile up for six months, and this woman goes in just like that? We go on the 18th. Oh, man, the 18th. Hey, uh, anybody check on that embezzler report? Alleged embezzler. Hey, relax, man. You're with friends. Send one of the boys down. Well, Malloy was on it first. No, not Malloy. Send somebody else. What's the matter sure. with Malloy? We had a meeting this morning. They wanted to suspend him. 
police commissioner talked them out of it, but I'm going to have to keep them out of sight for a while. Uh huh. They're getting nervous. <laughs> They're getting nervous. They're in a big hole in the ground. They won out. Even the cops on the precinct level are feeling it. Now, the image they've been trying to build since those riots last summer. Oh, forget it. Tony, I've come to a conclusion. We have no case. We've got to build one. By using the law books. No, no, you didn't let me finish. I don't think the answer's there. Even if we found a legal foundation for a case we could win in court, we'd still lose it. Lose how? Or something like this counts with the people. The real test of this case is how we'll look to Mr. and Mrs. Citizen. <laughs> If I had said that, you'd called it cynicism. No, 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 not this time. We can't ignore what's happened or, or cover it up. We can't ignore what's happened or, or get around it. But it isn't the uh, heinous crime against liberty that's being cracked up to be either. Our only vindication is to show a certain justification for the act, what triggered your idea in the first place. And the only way we can do that is expose the book for what it is. They've got all the power on their side. They can call up all the critics as experts who say that the book is art then we'll get experts of our own. I'd like to have your opinion of this book, sir. Well, what is it exactly that offends you? Well, how about those certain words in the book? Don't they offend you? Certain words might be necessary if you're going to describe that sector of life. In the work of the church, isn't the individual taught the difference between good and evil? <laughs> but of course, uh, uh, that's one objective, as it is in the home and the school. But it isn't always perfectly realized. It isn't always possible. Well, then, would you say that a form of control, such as censorship, might be in the best interests of the individual and the public? Well, I'm afraid that we prefer a society in which the individual is free to choose between good and evil. And censorship would, of course, inhibit that free choice. Thank you, sir. I'd be happy to testify to that effect in court. We'll let you know. Thank you. study you're referring to a publication by the university. We're primarily interested in the area of erotic literature. You said you had some figures pertaining to uh, sexual responsiveness? Yes. 21% of the males reported definite and frequent arousal from reading such literature. Uh -huh. Does your study show any connection between the criminal sex offender and uh, the reading of erotic literature? Yes. We, uh, we interviewed 1,700 men. Uh, all uh, previously arrested and convicted on sex charges. Uh -huh. But we found to our surprise that uh, they were less often aroused sexually by such material than the, the ones who had not been uh, convicted on sex charges. But surely there must be some connection between the uh, reading of salacious material and overt sexual activity. Well, no research and uh, no evidence is conclusive. There are guesses and uh, there are abundant estimates, but no proof of cause and effect. Uh-huh. Oh, thank you. I, uh, I hope I've helped. Question is who? How are you doing? Well, I did the Times crossword this morning, and now I'm on the trip. How about you? Not too good. Nobody wants to play on our side. We're on the side of the Philistines. Mm. I forgot your wife called. Oh, Phyllis? Yeah, that one. You got others? Alternate Wednesdays. What do you got there? I don't know, a number she left. Um, um, this isn't a beauty parlor. I don't feel much like swinging tonight. Hello, this is Dave Coster. It's Jess Horrell, Dave. How are you? Oh, Phyllis is powdering her nose. She'll be here in a minute. Hold on. This is no time to be half safe. This is the time to be sure. This is no time to be half safe. This is the time to be sure. Arid sure. Arid. The 
one deodorant that keeps you sure. Sure you are safe from the embarrassment of perspiration. Sure you are safe from odor. This is no time to be half safe. This is the time to be sure. Arid Sure. Use Arid every day to be sure. To be sure. To be sure. Arid Cream or Arid Roll-On. For the People, presented by Arid Deodorant to stop perspiration, stains, and odor. And by Pepto-Bismol Liquid and new Pepto-Bismol Tablets. This portion of For the People, presented by Parliament, the cigarette that lets you enjoy true, rich tobacco flavor, because the filter is in, recessed in. Practice trials at Le Mans, France. Here's Italy's Ferrari, 13 times world champion. And this is America's new challenger, the Ford GT. To protect their high-speed cars, Ford and Ferrari use Shell motor oils. Here's Ford's Roy Lund, chief design engineer. We are protecting our investment here with a fine motor oil. We specify Shell. Master car builder Enzo Ferrari. At Ferrari, we find that Shell motor oil answers our problems best, and racing does cause problems. But in a way, the stop-and-go driving you do makes a worse problem wear. Shell has an answer to wear problems caused by stop and go driving. New Super Shell motor oil. To help prolong your engine's life, ask for new Super Shell in the clean white can. Wherever you see this sign. This is a surprise, Mr. Harrell. I didn't know this was your home phone number. It isn't. I keep a studio. A home away from home. Actually, it's a second office. Oh, here she is now. Nice talking to you. Thanks. Dave? Hi. I tried to call you before, but Jesse had already sent the car, and I, I couldn't get you again. What? I said, what's a, what's the matter with him? And you, too. You can't be unaware that we're going to court over his book. Well, Jesse said you'd say that. Now, will you listen, please? That's a completely separate thing. But this has to do with me, and we're going to talk it over dinner, that's all. Oh, no, it's not social. I mean, it's business. That's right. But you can join us for coffee later. Ava, would you listen, please? Jesse went to a lot of trouble setting up appointments with Hurok and the State Department. Yes, they're looking for a chamber group to do a Russia. And if you think I'm going to pass up this chance, you're naughtier than I thought you were. Something smells about his sudden concern over your career. Dave, you're jealous. Don't be absurd. What has jealousy got to do with it? All right, I'll join you for coffee. Oh, good. Now, look, I don't know where we'll be yet, but uh, we'll call you when we get there. All right, look, uh, why don't you forget it? I've got a lot of work I can catch up on. You go to your conference. Enjoy yourself. Sounds like fun. Dave, you sound funny. Bad connection. Well, I'll call before I come home. Yeah, you do that. Good luck, honey. Why don't you look through your mail, huh? I sent you an envelope this morning into your office. I haven't had a chance to... Yeah. Hey, that's it. Why don't you read it? Uh, what is it? My promotion? I'm a burl over here. No, some of you would accept the invitation. I'm sure they'd be delighted. They would. You didn't see that? Me on that program. It's not a bad show. They get some pretty good people. Fine, and give them free publicity for that rotten book? They don't need any more. You know, you know that's the first intelligent thing you've said today. Hey, Tony. Attacking that book may be the wrong gambit, too. It was your idea. No, I know, but uh, there's been no court test on the book, and the courts have been pretty liberal when it comes to literature or, or anything that passes for literature. Hey, I have a notion. Why don't we put the author on the stand, huh? Do what? Are you kidding? Strip them bare. Expose them. 
You know, he must be half psycho to have written a book like that. The author's in Spain, I checked. That would work. All he had to do is smile and keep saying, Art. Well, I got a better. I got another idea. Without going to court, too. If it works. Well, uh, don't tell me about it. Just make sure that it does. And for Pete's sake, don't do what he did. Uh, stay in line. Come on, let's have a drink. No, I think I'll pass it up tonight, Tony. Oh, come on, don't take a half hour. Phyllis won't mind. Call her up, come on. No, I don't have to do that. Yeah, I could use a drink. Well, I'll just uh, stick around in case the phone rings or something. Uh, thanks for the offer, but I don't need a private secretary. Come on. You coming? I thought you'd never ask. That's fine, Mrs. Horrell. I certainly appreciate it, and I won't take much of your time. I'll be down in a half hour. Goodbye. Just time to thank you again. Say that next week our subject will be country manners and city morals. We've invited, among others, Assistant District Attorney Anthony Salisi, former congressional candidate. And sitting in that chair will be Mr. Jesse Horrell, businessman, philanthropist, publisher, and guardian of what he terms freedom of expression. It should be an interesting discussion. Tune in next week. Jameson, Costa, how'd you do this afternoon? No, look. I want a complete file on Jesse Harrell. That means financial everything. Try the newspaper morgues. In case you're wondering, they're open tonight. Good boy. I knew you were a beaver for work when you joined the office. If that makes you feel any better. I'll be working on it myself tonight. Thanks. Goodbye. About my husband, of course. Of course. A woman's vanity sometimes screens out the obvious. Let's her think that she hears overtones that don't exist. Please sit down. Oh, could I get you something to drink? No, thank you. Uh, my being here, truthfully, is... Um something I've never done before and wouldn't ordinarily do. Is it illegal? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's a result of uh, overtones. I uh, am very interested in, um, well, I can only call them overtones, in certain things you uh, said about your husband. Really? I can't imagine what you think you heard. Well, for example, when you said he was unassailable, what you were saying was that he, he couldn't be attacked. The implication, I thought, was ironical. Ah. Oh. You see, it is a misunderstanding. There's another meaning to unassailable. I meant that my husband couldn't be denied. Uh, Mrs. Horrell, uh, on the phone and at the party, your overtones led me to expect your cooperation. <laughs> but you're priceless. <laughs> uh, 
I didn't think you'd change your mind so early. You can't be that ingenuous. <laughs> and did you mean to disarm me into confiding all the deep and terrible secrets I know? Oh, no, 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 I didn't think you'd go that far. But perhaps all I need is the hint that there are such secrets. But every man has them. And every wife knows them, just as every husband knows the shadows that lie buried and hidden in his wife's past. I'm sure you do, don't you? All right, Alice, thank you. I didn't hear you come in. Oh, I've been here. Will you excuse us, Alice? Good night, Mr. Coster, Jesse. Your, uh, your wife thought you'd be at home. She called you to say she was on her way. She'll be worried, I think, being the girl she is. I appreciate your pointing out my uh, oversight. I'll hurry home and relieve her of her worry. Thank you very much. I didn't mean to anger you. I'm sorry. Would you like a drink? No, thank you. Your wife is very charming and very talented. I find it heartbreaking that your efforts to have a family have been unsuccessful. She told you that? We discussed it, yes. It's very important to her. You're trespassing. We have no business. Stay out of my private life. Well, I might ask the same of you. After all, I consider my personal affairs as inviolate as you do yours. That's the American way, isn't it? Good fences make good neighbors, as Mr. Frost put it. When good neighbors start murdering decency behind those fences, their lives stop being private, become public. Because their crime is against the public, against the people. Crime. Of course, I'm not the defendant in this case you're involved with, but I, I wonder what the court would think of your coming into my home without legal justification, armed only with vague, veiled threats and slandering away like a Cossack wielding a saber. That's bad form. And if anything today still has form, it's our blessed Constitution and our laws. You're a phony, Mr. Horrell. I'm going to expose you as one. I'm going to peel away that polished facade, expose the ten-cent works behind it, I'm going to let the people see the champion of liberty for the corrupting influence he is. All right. Enough sparring. You came here to see what you can learn. I know enough already. Ooh, then you might at least give me the same credit. But I won't be vague as you are. I'll tell you, I'm aware of how desperately you both want children. I know how long you've been trying to adopt an infant. And I also know what you're both afraid might be delaying their decision. You see, when you go looking for skeletons, you must be sure your own closet door isn't standing ajar. You're being as vague as you accuse me of being. Stop talking about closets standing ajar. Come on out with it. All right. Your wife was divorced in 1959 by her husband here in New York State on the only grounds possible. Your pretty wife's adultery, Mr. Costa, was, as you know, no show with hired actors put on to satisfy the law, but very real. And even by today's relaxed standards of morality, I'm going to destroy you. Come now, you're not the type for a dark exit speech. Good heavens, David, this isn't the gaslight era. People understand and sympathize. Naturally, the details of your wife's behavior are nobody's business. As I say, people will understand if they know all the circumstances. The only ones who might not sympathize are those bound by the rules of their jobs. Certain agencies, for example, concerned with the delicate task of giving a tiny baby the right sort of home. Dave? Well, honey, hurry up. I've got the most incredible news. I've, I've been sitting on pins and needles waiting to tell you. Hey, where have you been? Dave, will you come over here, please? First of all, I forgive you for not being home if you forgive me for having a terribly dull dinner. But listen, Dave, Jesse Harrell is fantastic. Don't. No, no, listen. He's arranged the whole thing. I'm going to Russia. And he can arrange for you to go, too, but the guy is the world's biggest wheeler and dealer. No, you listen. First, I must finish. There's something else. Dave, Jesse knows the people at the adoption agency. You know, he, did, he didn't want to promise anything. He didn't want us to get our hopes up. But Dave, he thinks he can help us. No, I want him to. I want him to. Take
that Parliament with the filter that's in recess in. Parliament has made this different way to let you enjoy true, rich tobacco flavor. Flavor you find only in Parliament. Parliament with the filter that's in recess in. I have a tough shaving problem. In fact, I've never had what I thought was a good, clean, smooth shave. And I have used the, uh, and the, I received more than I expected out of Persona. That's Persona, individually custom wrapped, the extra step to keep every blade extra sharp. I got an excess of 20 shaves, and they were a nice, clean, smooth shave, a soft shave. Better than average? Sure. But if Persona doesn't give you more luxury shaves, we'll buy you, or, or whatever blade you think is better. Stuff. They just brought it up. Yeah. Pete says it's all here, just the way you thought. Eat some apple. Tell Pete thanks. Costa. I'll be right in. I don't get it. What kind of a game are you playing? Here, take this paper and build yourself an airplane. You know something? I think you're pregnant. Tony, I want out. I want to go into private practice. Oh, come on. I haven't patience with that kind of temperament. I can't do my job. I'll be the judge of that. I'm mousetrapped. I can't move. You know, I don't get you. You get me on the phone last night. You're all excited. You want to replace me on this TV thing. So I call him up. I give you a big pitch. And you're going to be out. The next thing I know, I receive that. He's boxed me in. What? Where? Who? Morale. The implication is I'm in no position to attack his immorality. That well, has the stink of blackmail. Nothing I can prove. Well, don't be too sure. Tell me about it. Phyllis, her divorce. Now, wait a second. Now, let's talk about this. Tony, I'm no good to you, no matter what I'm on. There's nothing to prevent him from doing it again whenever he needs to. It's a very subtle form of blackmail. He's threatening to expose something that's a matter of public record. Well, I don't want you to think I'm unsympathetic. I don't understand, because I do. But we're in a very awkward position. We can't back out on this now. I'm sorry. We're here because one of you handsome heroes is going to go on television next week. Now, to an outsider, it'll seem to be an ordinary bull session. Dave here will fill you in on why it won't be and why we're getting involved. We're going to lose that arrest case in court. There's no question of it. We've offered a settlement, as you know, but they... Insist on a trial. You'll see why in a minute. There's nothing we can do in a courtroom to show this case in its true light. Even if we prove the book, Hardcore Pornography, we still wouldn't be allowed to bring it up. It's irrelevant to the case. The book was perfectly legal to sell at the time of the arrest, and Malloy acted illegally. Therefore, no judge would allow us to attack the publisher. But the publisher is eminently attackable and vulnerable, I believe, in what you might call the court of public opinion. I've given you the limited background and vital statistics and so forth. He's a cynical and corrupt man. A smart man who's breaking no law. Remember that, he's breaking no law. But he has a contempt for everything decent. It's that simple. In his view, anything goes, as long as it's a buck. And the funny thing is, and it's there on uh, page two, his parents were fairly well off. He's got the whole city playing his game without realizing it. Example, checking the corporate statements on file, you can see the books and magazines he publishes under various titles. That's no felony or anything else. That's the whole point. He's breaking no law. Unless you think there might be a moral law. Example, his public relations man handles a service on the side, preparing sermons for uh, clergymen too busy to uh, write their own. They receive these sermons on Saturday. Many of them read them without changing a word. Denunciations from the pulpit of certain books on Sunday morning send sales soaring on Monday morning. Books like these, published by Harrell. This PR man is earning his fee in spades. That's why. That's nothing. Why do you think he's insisting on a trial? He'd welcome a court case in the book alone. Just the threat of it being possibly banned would sell out an entire printing. It's happened before. I don't really get it. The guy isn't breaking any law. You said it yourself. But you sound like you're after his scalp. I'm after his head. Take a walk around town, see the examples of moral decay. Breakdown of those things that are supposed to set man apart from the other animals. Manipulators, panderers like 
Like Harrell, slippery wheelers and dealers say they're just giving the public what it wants. You're the public, Frank. Is it what you want for yourself, for your children? For your children? Your, I was going to say, baby, you're going to have to handle it yourself. You can't, Tony. I want to. Maybe if you talk to Phyllis. I already maybe. have this morning. I can't do it to her. I know Phyllis. She'll understand. She's intelligent. Tony, too. she doesn't give a good rap about abstractions right now. There's Phyllis Costa who wants to hold a baby in her arms more than anything else right now, no matter what the cost. It's very real, very tangible. A baby. You can't sing honor to sleep or buy a toy for decency. More coffee? Yeah. Thanks. Is this the way it's going to be from now on? It's all settled. Sure, sure, it's settled. I mean, now you're slinking around, looking at me accusingly. There's no need to feel any guilt. Oh, I know that. I know that better than you. Well, it just isn't fair. Babe, you can't force this decision onto me. I, w I won't stand still for that. I will not be the heavy. You can't expect me to give up a chance at a baby for some vague abstraction, some meaningless ideal. Phil, we both want the baby. Well, then let's not do anything to jeopardize it. No matter what the cost. Costs whom? And costs what? What's the difference who Jesse Harrell is or what you think he is? Dave, we've only got one chance, one life. You and I, we're important. What would destroying him mean to the city, to anything? A couple of books, a magazine? Honey, it's our life as a family. What else is there? Just looking at each other openly. With respect. Without reproach. Well, that won't change. It has already. You're saying things I never heard you say. You're willing to knuckle under to a man who's threatened us, a man who's forced himself into our lives. Blackmailing. I'm not talking about abstractions or ideals, baby. I'm talking about you and me. He's changed you and me. We're different than we were two days ago. He's changed us. We no longer exist. The three of us now. Yes, a baby, if we're smart. No, a man. Who's willing to spread the details of your divorce all over. Dave Coster. Champion of decency, defender of morality. Who's got a scandal in his own backyard. Oh, Dave, you are putting it up to me. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to block your career. Honey, you're not hurting me. Well, just tell me one thing. Are you ashamed of what you did? Well, well you know the frame of mind I was in. You know everything that... Are I you ashamed? About. No, no, I'm not ashamed. Not then, not now. Neither am I. Neither am I. Meaning what? That you've decided to take the... Meaning... 
you've decided to go through with it? Meaning that I love you. That precious thing between us, that, that fragile thing that makes us one. And I won't let a man like Jesse Harrell deliberately destroy it to save himself. understand. The way I feel now is any indication. I can't guarantee that you won't be the one who destroys us. Phil, listen. No. No, I mean it. I'm sorry. But I want you to do what's right for us, not the world. Somehow thought the two were allied. Yeah. You, you'll give me the uh, five, look, say, a, say a five or a look, ten. We'll give seconds. you a ten seconds, seconds you know. nine, eight, okay, seven, right, so yeah. on, and then we start shooting cards. Okay. Good. You'll see it. You'll be fine. Well, I guess I better take off. It don't look too good my being here anyway. Thanks for the company. Good luck. Thank you. Oh, uh, I told him what your wife looks like in case she decides to show up. She's at home. I talked to her. Good luck. You're very foolish, you know. You're risking a lot. Maybe. Oh, I don't mean in front of those cameras. I wouldn't do anything that overt. Be surprised what might happen in front of those cameras. <laughs> then you'd be stupid as well. You know, Mr. Harrell, the people watching this show, I'm their extension in a way. In my job, I represent the people. And they've always been called stupid. The stupid herd, the great unwashed, the mob. You're wrong. I love them. I understand what they need. Good. And you've seen the awesome power of the mob. They've torn men apart in seconds. With you, it'll take a little longer. One minute. Positions, everyone. One minute there. Is this the man of law and reason? I can't believe my ears. Shame on you. An assistant district attorney. Mr. Costa, please. Thirty seconds, everybody, settle down, please. Phyllis. Oh, Our TV sits on the blink. Is it? I'm glad. Hey, maybe we could have dinner later. I haven't eaten. Neither have I. Mr. Costa, please, over there now. Oh, Mr. Costa, you don't see her again. Will I, even if we lose? Oh, hey, we're right, we can't lose. another night of the round table. Our subject tonight is country manners and city morals. And we'll introduce tonight's guests right after this message from our sponsor. What a family. Leftovers again. Better get the Reynolds wrap. Reynolds Wrap, world's best saver of good food. Wrap up that leftover roast and store it in the refrigerator. Later, just reheat it in a moderate oven. The Reynolds Wrap holds in the juices. For the fruit salad, simply wrap the bowl and all and into the refrigerator. Make up lunchbox sandwiches with leftover breads, meats, and cheeses. 
Just wrap them in Reynolds wrap and store in the refrigerator. Or put them in the freezer and they'll stay fresh for months. Yes, for cooking, wrapping, or storing, Reynolds wrap. Now be sure to check the box you're now using because this handy reminder tells you when it's time for more. And be sure to get Reynolds wrap. It's oven tempered for flexible strength. For the people, presented by Reynolds, where new ideas take shape in aluminum. And by Shell Oil Company, who also bring you Super Shell gasoline for good mileage.